This is the main interface for ColorMonkey Photo. Setting up screen to print matching is as simple as clicking one button. Getting accurate on screen color is the first and one of the most important steps in setting up a properly color calibrated environment. ColorMonkey has the capability to automatically control and adjust your display to achieve the optimum settings for highlight detail, shadow detail, luminance level, and color temperature. This automatic control of your display is done through an industry standard communication protocol that is supported by many recent video cards and displays. The first time you profile your display, ColorMonkey will try to communicate with your display using these commands. If your video card and display combination respond to ColorMonkey's commands, then ColorMonkey will assume full control and automatically optimize your display before it characterizes the display and builds the ICC profile. If ColorMonkey finds your combination of hardware is not responding to this communication, then you may be asked to manually adjust your display brightness and contrast controls to their optimum settings. If this sounds complicated, don't worry. ColorMonkey will direct you the whole way and guide you through the process. So, let's get started. If you have more than one display connected to your computer, choose which one you'd like to profile and click Next. The application window will jump to that screen. Verify the type of display you'll be profiling and choose Easy or Advanced. If you're new to all of this, Easy Mode is a great way to start. It will do a great job of profiling your display and requires very little interaction on your part. If you have some experience or require greater accuracy, consider Advanced Mode. Advanced Mode adds the ability to optimize the brightness and contrast settings on your display. Most modern displays have these controls, and without a tool like ColorMonkey to help you, it can be difficult to know how they should be set. There are several reasons to optimize the brightness and contrast before building a profile. First, we want to adjust the display so that we can see good detail in both highlight and shadow areas while still maintaining a level of brightness that is acceptable under typical viewing conditions. Doing this will also provide a more consistent appearance between multiple monitors on the same machine and on machines in the same workgroup. If you check the luminance option, ColorMonkey takes the additional step of further optimizing the display for the specific lighting conditions in your work environment. Target white point refers to the intensity of a device's brightest white. Different industries and different regions use different standards. If you're unsure about yours, leave it set to the default. To maintain measurement consistency, the color monkey first needs to calibrate itself. As I showed you earlier, rotate the dial to the indicated position and click the calibrate button in the software or just press the measure button on the side of your monkey. If at any point you're not sure what the software is asking you to do, click on this icon to see a quick video demonstrating the step. The info button is also available for written explanations. Wait until the software tells you it's ready and then rotate the dial to the top position. Don't worry, your monkey software is smart. It will provide arrows with the proper direction to rotate the dial. In order to measure the ambient light in your work area, place the color monkey next to your display and click the measure button in the software or again on the monkey. The monkey will measure the amount of ambient light and use this reading to optimize the luminance of the display. When the measurement is complete, Rotate the dial to the bottom position as shown. At this point, zip the monkey into the soft case and place the weighted strap over the top of the display. It's really important to make sure the cover on the bottom of the case is open. Place the monkey over the indicated area and click Next. Because I chose Advanced Mode, the software may ask me to adjust the brightness and contrast settings. All displays are a little different but there are frequently buttons near the bottom of the screen for making these adjustments. Make the changes slowly and give the monkey time to read the new settings before proceeding. If you adjust too quickly, the indicator may jump past the goal. Also, some displays place the adjustment menu in the center of the screen, underneath where the monkey is currently hanging. If this is the case, simply slide the device to one side while making the adjustments. Make sure to stay in contact with the screen. Also, be sure that you are moving the cursor well out of the way. 
If your display does not support making one or both of these adjustments, simply click the Next button to move on. You'll see the screen display a series of colors. The monkey will measure each of these colors and use that information to build a display profile. This may take a few minutes. Once the profile is complete, you can set the software to remind you when it's time to profile again and set the interval here. The more color critical your work is, the more often you should recalibrate. The next screen shows a before and after comparison of the display. See why profiling is so important? You can't judge color visually if your monitor isn't displaying it accurately. All right, we're halfway to a color managed workflow. Now for the printer. To build a printer profile, we print known combinations of printer values, either RGB or CMYK, measure the results, and then calculate the profile or lookup table. Then, when you print using the new profile, applications will know which combination of printer values will provide the correct or accurate colors required to process and print the job accurately. Each profile is specific to the combination under which it was printed. Because inks react differently to different media, and all print heads are a little bit different, it's important to create a new profile for each printer, ink, and media combination that you'll be using. In the first section, I want to create a new profile. I'll talk more about optimizing an existing profile later. Select the printer you want to profile. It has to be a printer that is currently connected to your computer and turned on. ColorMonkey is smart. It automatically recognizes the type of printer you've selected and chooses the correct chart for that type of printer. As I mentioned, each profile only works with the type of paper it's printed on. Here, name the paper. This information will later be used when the profile is named. Click Next and then Print. I want to talk a little bit about printer settings. There are a lot of different printers out there with a lot of different software driving them. I can't begin to cover all of them here, but there are always a couple things you want to keep in mind. You want to turn off all built-in color management and then use the same settings to print the target that you're going to use later to print your files. Consistency is key. The first thing you need to do is select the type of media you're going to be printing on. In the Epson driver, you do this by going to Print Settings and selecting it from the Media Type drop-down. Next, we need to turn off any automatic color adjustments. These could have names like PhotoFix or Real Life Technology. Here, it's just called Automatic, but we want to turn it off. Also, be sure to set the print quality or resolution to whatever you would normally use. You'll be applying color management in your applications when you print, not in the printer driver. So in the Epson driver, I still need to go to the printer color management drop-down and turn off color management so that no conflicts are created. Once you've created the profile, you'll always want to use these same settings whenever you print. Click Next. If you're profiling an inkjet printer, it's important to wait for the target to completely dry before reading it. Along with the possibility of smudging, the colors in an inkjet print can change dramatically in the first 10 minutes. This timer will let you know when 10 minutes has expired. Other types of printers, like a laser printer, require virtually no dry time. If that's the case, you can cancel the timer. After 10 minutes, most inkjet prints should be fully dry, but it depends on the type of paper. High gloss photo prints hold a lot of ink and usually take a lot longer than matte prints to dry. While you wait, look over the target for any imperfections. The patches should be smooth, flat areas of color without banding or texturing. 